So, um, my name is Jody Garnett. I've just had an introduction. I'd just like to thank my employer, Geocat, for the chance to speak with you today. Uh, so, GeoServer, what does GeoServer do? GeoServer is a Java web application. It's really designed to publish your information, share your information with the public. Uh, the idea with GeoServer is you publish your information once, and we speak as many protocols as we possibly can to get your data in the hands of the most people. Uh, just a GeoServer community update for 2022. We're roughly holding steady. The size of the GeoServer team is uh, kind of hanging out here uh, with a core PSC member and 21 committers. Uh, we've organized, uh, if you visit our website, there's a number of different service providers which are organized into core contributors, experience providers, and uh, other folks that showed up to have fun. In terms of GeoServer infrastructure, um, we've been in the process of migrating our infrastructure from uh, Boundless Geo uh, over to OSGeo, and we're just completing the last uh, section of that, migrating our docs over to OSGeo hosting. Any updates for the community modules? Well, as usual, every year we have new modules coming in, uh, old modules that are not used or maintained anymore going out. So you have a list there. We are going through uh, the significant ones over the next slides, so I'm not going to list them right now. Sounds good. In terms of GeoServer uh, release, we've run two releases in parallel, a stable release and a maintenance release. Uh, and we're just in the process of scheduling GeoServer uh, 2.22 coming up in September. Um, just in terms of what to look forward to here, uh, in GeoServer 2.22, we're going to look at dropping Java 8 support and going to Java 11 um, moving forward. If you're using an older version, please upgrade. Security fixes are only really added to the supported versions, the stable and maintenance ones, so just a reminder to update your GeoServers. If you update, you've got lots to look forward to. Uh, new features show up in the stable branch. And if you look at the bottom of these slides, you can see uh, the, the folks who implemented the, the change, the improvement, and occasionally the sponsors or who paid for the work. Exactly. Uh, just coming up for distribution, um, we've got an official Docker image. This has been a really community-led effort started at one of the Phosphor-G conferences, and it's just become live in the last two or three weeks. We used it for our workshop on Monday. Uh, we've also restored our Windows installer, which was lost due to vandalism like five years ago. So good to have that back. Okay, mapping. Mapping. So new feature in, in GeoServer 221 is layer group styles. So now if you are publishing a layer group, you can provide alternate set of styles for them, which means different styles for the same layers, but also a different layer list if you need to. Uh, we have a new feature that allows us to control the symbology factories, which uh, it really helps when you uh, need to uh, publish hundreds of thousands of points. This is a, uh, a map from EMSA. It's depicting all ships in the European seas is like 150,000 ships. In terms of data sources and formats, we have this new feature type customization, which was long needed. Um, you can uh, rename attributes, change the type, add new attributes based on SQL expressions. Uh, we, well, he. Uh, yeah, GeoCat, on behalf of one of our customers, uh, managed to upgrade to GDAL3 support. Uh, GDAL3 has been out for some time, but we don't actually get compatibility and a chance to uh, work with the latest GDAL unless we've got funding to test and make sure it works for you. We also have new support, uh, native support for uh, Google Cloud uh, storage in uh, the COG module, in the Cloud Optimized GOTF module. And uh, we have improved a lot uh, performance reading hyperspectral images, that is images which, which have hundreds of bands and which are typically organized in a band interleaved fashion. Uh, we also have added support for libdeflate in GeoTIFF. We always supported deflate compression, both in input and output, but this library allows it to uh, run faster. In terms of uh, services, back to Jody. Um, yeah, once again, we've added uh, geo package output support. So in addition to downloading your favorite Excel or CSV or shapefile, you can now finally uh, download a geo package from WFS or WMS requests. Functionality was there already, but we graduated it to extension. Uh, we also have the graduation of the CSW ISO module, which was once upon a time an extension, then downgraded to community, and then 
a few months ago, it came back up with a maintainer. Along with it came the metadata module, which allows us to uh, um, define a, an input form, add extra metadata in uh, the layer, and then use that information to make the ISO documents richer. Is that an actual extension or a community module? Extension. It oh, graduated wow. through NEOs uh, along with the CSW ISO. Excellent. We also have the KML output support for WPS now, uh, which makes the parallel with the, the WFS. Uh, it's part of the WPS package. You don't have to do uh, anything. You just download the WPS. It comes with KML. Uh, we also have uh, support for MB tiles as a new uh, GeoWeb cache layer. So if you have a fully seeded MB tiles file, you uh, can configure it as a tile layer in GeoWeb cache. In terms of configuration and setup, we now have a language chooser at the top right so that you can switch language at runtime. We have, uh, thanks to the efforts of Alexandre Gasson, uh, much improved uh, internationalization. Uh, he has uh, updated uh, most of the languages. And uh, uh, we have support for the Inspire language request parameters so that you can switch the contents of your map, get feature info, the capabilities to the language that you desire. Um, we also have a... Uh, we just cleaned up the server status page a little bit, made it have actual units, uh, checked, updated the documentation, and so forth. So just health and happiness updates. Uh, we also added a really nice tool for troubleshooting GeoServer. Uh, if you ever had GeoServer run out of memory or otherwise be unhappy with you, uh, there's some debugging techniques where you can ask Java, what the heck are you doing, or where did all your memory go? That's now available right from the GeoServer UI. Um, and yeah, just a big update here. Uh, there was a number of security vulnerabilities discussed in the press, and although GeoServer was not vulnerable, and we made an announcement to that effect, people honestly wouldn't shut up. They kept uh, panicking and contacting us. So eventually we asked them, well, we can update it. Do you want to pay us? Um, and so we did a small fundraising. So thank you to the organizations listed below. Uh, for helping sponsor this activity. And then also thanks to uh, Euron and Geocat for giving me a chance to work on that. Project went mm, way over budget. I had to like ask the Log4j folks for help, but we got there, so. I don't want to say too much, it's logging. How exciting can it be? Uh, we also added a feature that was buried off in the depths of configuring your web XML file by hand. So there's now a UI to enable request logging, so you can actually check what GeoServer sees for requests, request headers, request bo uh, bodies, and so on. Getting back to security vulnerabilities, if you do run into something, uh, there's a contact email address as part of our security policy. Give us a shout. Uh, there was a number of security vulnerabilities that hit us this year. log for shell was the one that was popular in the press. Uh, there was a, a minor one, spring for shell We couldn't find an exploit, um, and the, the mitigation was to run in Java 8, but we did release a copy of GeoServer with that vulnerability patched. We also had, shock, our own security vulnerability. Our first one to get an official uh, CVE number was a vulnerability in our GIFL scripting language. So once again, a reminder to please update your GeoServers. Um, once again, we're holding steady with developers at, uh, at uh, GeoServer. We really would like to recruit more people, so please come by the Code Sprint this weekend. Um, roadmap. This is one I'm really excited about, and thanks for everyone who attended my workshop on Monday for beta testing this. Uh, so the welcome page in GeoServer has, for the first time in a decade, changed. So it now actually lists your web services with their header and their abstract. You can use that little language chooser to change between the different languages that uh, you're publishing. And it lists the services uh, for each one. Um, it also reveals a feature that GeoServer has had forever that people didn't know about. You can actually get a web service that's just for one workspace or even a single layer. Right, uh, so uh, the, the Cog Reader is now getting support also for Azure, so it means that we can now read from HTTP Server, S3, uh, Azure, and, uh, and Google Storage. Is uh, that ever going to graduate? It's still lurking there, isn't it's it? It's still lurking there. I think that we want to have a little bit more testing uh, and, uh, in, the, in the real world before we, it graduates, but and, it's and getting by, close. And by testing, do you mean funding? Uh, also funding, sure. Oh, okay, okay, sounds good. I would really love to have caching. 
before releasing it to the public. Um, in terms of a, a small change, the GeoSuper REST API now has the ability to reset a single store or layer. Um, previously, you could only just reload the entire catalog. This really prevents uh, folks writing scripts that like delete a data store and recreate it, or other just horrible things I've seen. Right, we are also working on a stack data store, with, that is a data store that can talk to a stack API server, and that would uh, then publish all the stack items uh, as WMS or, or WFS and the protocols. And we are now integrating it with Image Mosaic so that if the items are pointing to assets which are cogs, we are then going to uh, dynamically mosaic uh, remote images and produce maps. We are also working on a vector mosaicing store which deals with a slightly different use case. Say you have millions and millions of points, like billions maybe, but they are organized in uh, single collects, like uh, all the points where a tractor was in a field, and you are normally wa watching only that field for that day, then uh, the vector mosaicing store is probably interesting because you can store all your uh, collects in files, in, a, in, a, in, the, in, in the blobs, in, in S3, maybe as a flat geobuff, and then have this store index them all and give you access to uh, the right file as a single seamless source, rather than publishing thousands of different sources. Um, yeah, back to roadmap things here. So we are looking to drop Java 8, 8 support. Java's had a real revitalization now that Oracle's gotten out of the way. Uh, so yeah, we're looking ahead at the Java roadmap, dropping support for Java 8. Uh, we currently support Java 11, which is a long-term support release. And we are running in Java 17, but we don't recommend that quite yet. OK, and there was a few people at the workshop trying to run Java 18 and failing. So we'll be looking ahead at that. Okay, so uh, in terms of R&D, we have talked already about the cloud.ms GeoTIFF community module. Uh, we are looking forward to people that want to contribute or sponsor more blob storage options and caching support. Uh, the OGC API community modules are in the works. Uh, again, we are looking for people that want to contribute and uh, complete the implementation of the APIs. As some are lacking some bits. and. Uh, uh, updating the existing one to the latest uh, version of the spec because they keep on uh, being updated. They are in draft mode and, and keep on being changed. Uh, the GeoPackage community module, well, uh, you heard about it. Uh, it has been uh, split into parts. The um, WFS and WMS, uh, sorry, the WFS and WPS outputs are now extensions. Uh, the WMS one, uh, not yet. And we have a WPS process that allows you to create multi-layer geopackages and so on, which is still in community. If you're interested in helping uh, with time or funding, please contact me. Uh, site, we did schedule to work on site this year, and then security vulnerabilities happened and sucked all the oxygen out of the room. Right. Uh, if oxygen returns to the room, we encourage you to support us in this activity. Thanks. Did we actually finish early? Wow. Good that job. Wasn't expected. Yeah.